Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to appreciate you, Jehovah, that at this time you have chosen to revive the church. I ask you, my Father, to bless these people, bless this nation, the nation of Kenya, with an eternal revival. Even as you take us out, Jehovah, I ask you to bless this church. The revival that you've lit up in this land. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bless the churches of repentance and holiness. I bless the council bishops. I bless the people in the churches. I bless your homes, your children, provision, protection, good health, that the Lord will bless your eternity also. In the mighty name of Jesus. So it shall be amen. What a mighty blessing to be here. At this time, blessed people, to come to you again at this very important time in the life of the church. When I heard that you are here, my heart jumped with joy because I knew I was coming to you. And so I'm very blessed to come to Utawala main altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I bless the senior pastor of Utawala main altar. Together with Mama Deputy Archbishop Tangara. Together with the entire church in Utawala. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I bless the entire church in Kenya, right? In the mighty name of Jesus. So it shall be amen. Those who have seats, can you be seated so we get started? This is very brief though. Again, I want to repeat that joy swept my heart when I heard that I was coming to you because I know that this is the foundation of this revival. This is the foundation of the revival the Lord is sending to the nations. And thank you for receiving me in such a tremendous way. Again, I want to repeat that when I heard that you are here, my heart jumped with joy. Because <laughs> I knew I was coming to you in the name of Jesus. Because I know that this is the benchmark the Lord is using to revive the nations. And so, I'm very blessed to come back to you, blessed people. And I want to thank you so much for coming. And I want to bless you, release the first blessings upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So I decree the eternal blessings of the Lord upon you. Your families. Your churches. Your children. Your health. Provision. Salvation. And the eternity in the mighty name of Jesus. And today I have placed before you 20 fold baskets. Again, I stand before the Lord. 
And before the nations today to decree in the mighty name of Jesus that in your choice to pursue righteousness the Lord Almighty will now place 20 fold baskets before you. And so it shall be according to the words of my tongue. Amen. Thank you. Can you be seated now? So now, now that we have come back, I want to thank you for continuing to be born again. You continued being born again. Even as the Lord took us out there. And we have shared with them. This wonderful story of Jesus in Kenya. We have shared with them. This awesome visitation that has befallen you. And we have told them that this is the standard of the Lord. I told Brazil that this is the standard of the Lord. And that's why without wasting much time, I want just to be brief here. In Brazil, I spoke the judgment of the Lord. I told the clergy there that if they don't bring Brazil to repentance because of homosexuality, the judgment of God is coming to strike Brazil. And then after I say it so, then I also told them that the Messiah is coming. And part of the scriptures I read, I want to read here. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Again, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verses 13, I'm reading all the way to verse 18. He says, brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be ignorant and informed. Again, to be ignorant and uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Then, thank you for moving fast otherwise somebody else takes over verse 15 he says according to the Lord's own word we tell you that we who are still alive and are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep in Jesus for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first Verse 17 he says after that we were still alive and are left to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air after that we who are still alive and are left 
Tuliosalia will be raptured caught up together with them in the clouds tutanyakuliwa pamoja nao katika mawingu to meet the lord in the air ili kumlaki bwana hewani and so we will be with the lord forever hivyo tutakuwa pamoja na bwana milele that is now introducing eternity with christ sasa hiyo ni kutanguliza umilele na kristo and therefore encourage one another with these words kwa hiyo farijianeni kwa maneno haya now sasa This is what I told the nations out there. That the Messiah is coming. That they need to prepare. And I told them very clearly. That if the king is coming. Then it's important that they prepare Brazil. And I told them very clearly. In Brazil. Kule Brazil. Very very clearly. Nikawaambia wazi wazi kabisa. That that day or hour is not known. Ya kwamba siku hiyo wala saa haijulikani. And so any time he can come. Na hivyo basi wakati wowote anaweza kuja. And then as I was leaving. Na hivyo basi nilipokuwa nilikuwa naondoka. Then I had a special session with some few blessed senior clergy. Kisha nikakuwa na awamu fupi pamoja na ukuhani uliobarikiwa wachache tu. And then I told them. Kisha nikamwambia. That the words I have spoken in this land of Brazil. Ya kwamba maneno ambayo nimenena katika taifa hilo la Brazil. Those words. Hayo maneno. Are not the words of men. Sio maneno ya mwanadamu. And those words na hayo maneno are going to be fulfilled. Yataenda kutimilizwa. And I told them. Nami nikawaambia. That be very careful now. Kwamba makinikeni sana sasa. Because my words don't drop, they will be fulfilled. Kwa sababu maneno yangu yanguki chini yatatimilizwa. And I told them. Nami nikawaambia. That the Messiah is going to come. Ya kwamba Masiya anaenda kuja. And I told them to focus on verse 15. Which says according to the Lord's word. We tell you that we who are still alive where we means the last generation to the rapture. And again he says according to the Lord's own word we tell you that we who are still alive and are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. And I say the meaning of that is this. After you've seen verse 13 the laying of the foundation of the rapture 13 and 14 whereby the death and the resurrection of Jesus in other words the cross and the blood at the foundation of the rapture of the church and so all the principles that govern the cross and the blood they govern the rapture of the church that in that vision of November 1 the year 2006 when he showed me the spiritual glorious wedding rings in other words he was saying he was saying that that event is the authorization the authority of the Christ the rapture of the church is the manifestation physical and spiritual manifestation of the power and the authority of the Christ that on one day the Lord Jesus will take real people physical people 
from the earth here kutoka katika dunia hapa and they will leave everything and go up into heaven the na, way i have seen na wataacha kila kitu na kwenda mbinguni kama vile ambavyo nimeona and they will not come back they will enter there and stay there forever na hawatarudi tena i said nilisema that that is the authority of the messiah ya kwamba hayo ndio mamlaka ya messiah And then I told them that now verse 15. Na kisha nikawaambia kwamba sasa mstari wa 15 lays out the guarantee. Basi ile inaweka msingi lays out the guarantee that this event will take place. Inaweka msingi na dhamana ya kwamba tukio hili litatendeka. I'm simply telling you what I told Brazil. Ninawaambia tu kimsingi kile ambacho niliambia Brazil. And so I say unto the nations tuned in. Na hivyo basi nasema kwa mataifa yanayosikiliza. To Kenya first. Kwanza kwa Kenya. And then to Israel. Alafu kwa Israel. And then to the nations. Alafu kwa mataifa. He's saying this. Anasema hivi. That verse 15 says. Mstari wa 15 anasema. According to the Lord's word. Kulingana na neno la Bwana. We tell you that we who are still alive and are left. Tunawaambia kwamba sisi ambao bado tuko hai tuliobaki. Until the coming of the Lord. Hadi kuja kwake Bwana. Will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. Hakika hatutatua hatutawatangulia waliolala mauti. So that verse. Kwa hivyo huo mstari says certainly. Unasema kighafla lays the certainty unaweka ule ugafla that this event with certainty will take place kwamba tukio hili kighafla litatendeka for sure will take place kwa hakika litatendeka and then before he left uh, the city of sao paulo alafu kabla niondoke katika mji wa sao paulo i told them nikawaambia that first of all ya kwamba kwanza kabisa just owing to the nature of the church kuzingatia tu na asili ya kanisa the way the lord created the church jinsi ambavyo bwana aliliumba kanisa you know that he has to take the church unachua kwamba itabidi alichukue kanisa the certainty of his return ule udharura ugafla wa kucha the surety the guarantee that the rapture must take place the church must be taken ile hakikisho kwamba unyakuzi lazima utendeke kanisa lazima lichukuliwe because of the sheer nature of the church kwa sababu ya asili ya kanisa when jesus wakati ambapo yesu was about to be crucified alipokuwa karibu kusulubishwa then they asked him are you a king are you the king of the jews kisha wakamuliza je wewe ndiwe mfalme wa wayahudi then he told them kisha akawaambia that my kingdom is not of this place ya kwamba ufalme wangu sio wa mahali hapa and then he says to you kisha anasema kwenu that you also do not belong to this place kwamba nyinyi pia msiwe wa hapa so by the nature of the church itself just the sheer nature kwa hivyo kwa asili tu ya kanisa lenyewe asili ya kanisa tu you know that the reason we become saved born again unajua kwamba sababu ambayo tuliokoka is that one day ni kwamba siku moja we may get out of here and go to where we belong tukapate kutoka hapa na tuende mahali ambapo ni kwetu so it is obvious that with certainty one day he will take the church na hivyo basi ni bayana ni dhahiri na hakikisho ya kwamba siku moja itatendeka and number two, na jambo la pili we also know that according to the way god shows tremendous fidelity and faithfulness to his word ya kwamba tunachua jinsi ambavyo bwana anaonyesha uaminifu kwa neno lake mwenyewe He shows unbelievable unmistakable faithfulness to his word. Anaonyesha ule uaminifu ambao hauyumbishi kamwe kabisa kuhusiana na neno lake. He will know that in his own word he has said he will come back. Unajua kwamba kwa neno lake mwenyewe amesema kwamba atarudi. So when he says certainly certainly laying certainty to this event this event will take place. Kwa hivyo anaposema hakika hakika kisho hakika yake ni kwamba tukio hili litatendeka this event must take place ni tukio hili lazima litatendeka he uses the word certainly when he's describing how will to take place that and we who are still alive will certainly not so he's saying this event has certainty has a guarantee anatumia neno hakika hakika yake kwa hivyo tukio hili linahakikisha kwamba litatendeka and so na hivyo basi 
Just the faithfulness of the Lord to his word. We know that the Lord himself spoke about this day on many occasions. Sometimes he calls it the coming of the son of man. And sometimes he says like a thief. The coming of the Lord. And many other words ways he uses to express that day in the Bible. The Lord himself with his own word talking about that day that you are preparing for. And so therefore you know that if the Lord himself has spoken about this day then the rapture of the church is not by the word of man but by the authoritative word of God and we remember too well that the same authoritative word of God the same authoritative word of God in the beginning there was no earth and there was no heaven and then by God's own authoritative word he said, Let there be earth and heaven. And he formed it. First of all, full of water. And then he pulled the earth out of the water. And now here we are walking on the earth. We are aware of the credentials. We are aware of the authority of God's authoritative word. The guarantee that when the Lord spoke that let us make heaven and earth, today we have the earth, I'm standing here and talking to you. That is serious. And that is the same God's authoritative word that says he will come like a thief and he will take you home. If I go to the Father, I will be back to take you that you also may be where I am. That is the same authoritative word of God that must, 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 must be fulfilled. Must be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is serious. Very, very serious. According to God's own authoritative word. That same God's own authoritative word said, let us form man. Let us create man and form him from the dust of the earth and breathe life into him. And now look. Today we are looking at each other here. God's own authoritative word. God's unfailing word. That has said the Messiah is coming to take you home. The credentials of that word we know. In the Bible. And that that word never fails. And so I told Sao Paulo. And Brazil. That the words I have spoken here must be fulfilled. Must. Must be fulfilled. Begin to prepare Brazil. And I told them. 
That's why Kenya has been preparing non-stop. Because you know very well that that day will realize. And that even if you die before that day, then you take advantage. There is a favor, there is a preference that goes to those who die before the rapture. They go into the presence of God first. Bwana amesema hapa ya kwamba wale ambao wataongojea Yesu kuja kunyakuwa kanisa alafu wafe watakatifu wakufe kabla unyakuzi kuna kibali fulani ambalo wale ambao wamekufa kabla unyakuzi wanayo kuliko wale ambao bado wako hapa kwa maana wale ambao wanafariki kabla unyakuzi wakiwa wanaongojea Yesu alafu wanafariki kwa njia moja au nyingine wanaenda direct moja kwa moja mpaka uwepo wake wakati nyinyi bado mko hapa you see that now unaona hiyo sasa so there is a preference kwa hivyo kuna kibali for those who die before the rapture kwa wale wanaokufa kabla ya unyakuzi so it is a plus plus gain gain win win basi ni nyongeza nyongeza na kushinda na kushinda and that's why kenya is the most blessed nation right Ndiyo now sababu kenya the nation that is preparing for the coming of the Messiah. Brazil, three out of five young men are transgender. They are gay. Brazil, Thank you, Kevin, for shaking your head. Yes, it is true. You cry, you become mortified when you hear this. That's why we are tackling Brazil. We are laboring with Brazil because three out of five young men have changed into girls and they are longing for another man to take him home and marry him. My what? Lord. Wa, you can imagine what we are handling there. It is very serious. Extremely serious. It is very serious. He says, three out of five young men in Brazil are homosexual. Wafulana watatu kati ya wafulana watano kule Brazil ni mashoga. And then one time we had a meeting a session. Alafu wakati mmoja tulikuwa na mkutano tulikuwa na hawamu fulani. In the parliament buildings. Katika majengo ya bunge kule. In Brazil. Kule Brazil. In Brasilia. Kule Brasilia. Then when I finished and then this very senior lawyer who is also a senator walks to me. Alafu nilipomaliza yule wakili wa ngazi ya juu ambaye pia ni seneta akatembea kuja kwangu. And so hivyo basi and then he told me kisha akaniambia that the statistics also reveal that the remaining two can you imagine are sympathetic to homosexuality. Hebu wazia kwamba wale wawili waliosalia pia wanawahurumia wale mashoga. And then one time alafu wakati mmoja we had a meeting in the national assembly inside Tulikuwa na mkutano ndani ya bunge la kitaifa kule Brazil. This one was in the Senate and then this another one in the National Assembly. Hii nyingine ilikuwa kwenye Seneti, alafu hii sasa ilikuwa kwenye bunge kwenye bunge la kitaifa. A, which is called Congresso Nacional which is their parliament. Ambayo ndiyo bunge lao la kitaifa. And then alafu the one who was sitting next to me was a very senior chair of a parliamentary committee. Yule aliyeketi karibu nami alikuwa mwenyekiti mkubwa kabisa wa ngazi ya juu katika ile ile tume katika bunge. And so na hivyo basi I was telling him I said we need to address this matter of homosexuality in this country because the judgment of God is coming. Nilikuwa namwambia kwamba inabidi tushughulikie swala hili la ushoga katika taifa hili la Brazil maana yake hukumu ya Mungu inakuja. And so then I told him three out of five God must judge this country. Then he said, Okay, you need to add there unahitaji kuongeza pale those who are lesbians. Wale ambao ni walawiti. So you can imagine why we are struggling with Brazil. And so that's why I told the senior most clergy there. 
that there are two choices. I can choose to judge you now and strike this nation of Brazil and tumble down the buildings. The way I did in Chile, I did in Haiti, I did in Mexico. Oh, you choose repentance now. You choose repentance now. And choose revival. And go the way that Kenya has gone. And so, in that last meeting, I need to finish. With the clergy in Sao Paulo, I told them this. Please go and call this nation to repentance. Because number one, the judgment of God is coming. And I walked in front of them. And I, as I walked, I squelched my feet. Chua, 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 chua. And I said, the squelch of my feet have been hard in this land. The squelch of my feet have been heard in this land. And I said number two. The words I've spoken here about the return of Christ must be fulfilled. And that's why I brought to them the certainty, the guarantee that the rapture must take place. And I said, because it's the Lord's own word. And the Lord is faithful to his word. And number two, I say, number two. Because it's the, it's the Lord is also faithful to his righteousness. Because if you go to the Bible, in the book of Genesis 19 and you see how Lot and his family were being rescued from Sodom. If you see the way Lot and his family were being rescued from Sodom and Gomorrah. The Lord took them out of that fire. And they said, no, you see, let us go to these other Zohar, it's smaller. They said, okay, you reach there quickly because my righteousness demands that I separate thee from these ones before slaughter. Na wakasema kwamba waende huo mchi ulio kwa karibu wa Zohari. Na wakasema muakikisha mwefika uko kwa sababu uhaki wangu unadai kwamba lazima ni waokoe wenye haki. And he said, You must reach up there because I can do nothing until you reach up there. And then he pulled them out. If you ever get a chance to read the book of Genesis 18, verse 25, Abraham is talking to the Lord. It says the following, verse 25. Far be it from you to do such a thing to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the righteous judge of the earth do right? So, because of the way God is faithful to his righteousness, you know that the rapture must take place before 
before we strike the earth with the tribulation. Hallelujah. That's what I was telling the pastors there before I left. The very blessed view that I met, the senior most clergy that I met in Sao Paulo before I left, I told them, these are my final instructions for this country. I said the judgment of God is coming in the rapture of the church the Messiah is also coming these words I have spoken in the land of Brazil must, must, must be fulfilled that's what I told them. And I justified. I said because of the way God is faithful to his righteousness. He knows how to save the righteous while he judges or he keeps the wicked for judgment. That the Lord should take the righteous you that have believed in him. You have changed your lives and mix you the wicked and put you all to the same sword? Is that possible? No, no. The Lord to take you that have been faithful, you change your dressings, you change your ways, you change everything, you begin to worship him faithful in holiness, and then to take you and mix you the wicked and put you to the sword. No! Because of God's faithfulness to his righteousness, he must take you into the kingdom of God first. First, first, first. First. Kwa vile bwana ni mwaminifu sana kwa uhaki wake, inamubidi, inamulazimu ya kwamba sasa, wale ambao ni wake ni watakatifu, lazima awatenganishe na waovu, ndiyo sasa, apeleke watakatifu mbinguni kwenye usalama pale, kabla ajachinja wale ambao ni waovu. Na akasema, Iwe mbali kwake kabisa kuchanganya wale watakatifu ambao wamevumilia miaka nyingi vile mmevumilia awachanganye pamoja na waovu ambao walijegeli walijekeli Mungu wakambiaki Mungu awachanganye pamoja ni wakuachinja pamoja haiwezekani kabisa It will not happen It will not take place Haitatendeka he will not combine the righteous with the wicked and put them to the same sword. So this is what I told the church in Brazil, in Sao Paulo before I left. That the rapture must take place. By the very nature of the church, even the name Ecclesia, meaning set apart, separated out for God, separated from the world. Kwa asili yenyewe ya kanisa hata kutokana na neno Ecclesia, kwamba limewekwa kando, limetengwa kutoka kwa dunia. Hata ukizingatia jina ambalo Bwana alipea kanisa, alilipea jina Ecclesia manake wametenganishwa na dunia. Hiyo manake nyinyi ni wake Mungu, lazima nyinyi ni wa mbinguni, sio wa hapa. Haleluya. Haleluya. So very serious. Hiyo ni nyeti kabisa kabisa. And I told them. Nami nikawaambia that God is faithful to his righteousness. Kwamba Mungu ni mwaminifu kwa uhaki wake. And so, the rapture must take place. Because the executioners, the ones that execute the wrath of the Lamb are already here and they are already doing it. And so for you, wonderful you, 
Faithful you, beloved you, must be taken into glory. God must do that. And he says, let us prepare the Messiah is coming. Because God is faithful to his word and faithful to his righteousness. And the Messiah is coming. So that is the message I gave Brazil and I give unto you. But because I love you too much, Kenya, I've released eternal blessings of eternity in your lives. Eternal blessings of eternity inside your lives. That the Lord will provide for you during this time when there is economic hardship. You will have abundance and 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 abundance a trillion times. Wakati uchumu ni ugumu kama hii nimeamurisha na ulimi wangu wa kiunabi ambalo neno lake ni neno la Jehova mwenyewe ambao neno lake haijawahi kuanguka chini ya kwamba wakati wa ugumu wa uchumi wakati huu Bwana atawatualia atawajaza atawafurisha milele na milele na milele na milele mara trilioni ndio dunia nzima ipate kujua ya kwamba I have loved you. Mimi Jehova nimewapenda. Asemaye Bwana. Ndio dunia nzima ipate kujua kwamba mimi Jehova nimewapenda. Asemaye Bwana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Repeat this prayer. Rudia ombi hili. Mighty Father. Today I repent. Baba mku leo ni natubu. And I repent from all sin. Ni natubu dhambi zangu zote. And I ask you my father to come right into my heart now. Na nakusi baba ya kwamba ukuje moja kwa moja mpaka ndani ya moyo wangu saa hizi. I am receiving you Jesus. Nina kupokea ewe Bwana Yesu. Deliberately. Kima shodi. Right now. Sasa hivi. In my heart. Moyoni mwangu. As my Lord. Kama Bwana wangu. And my savior. Kama mwokozi wangu. My Lord Jesus, prepare me for eternity. Bwana wangu Yesu. Niandae kuhusu ufalme wa milele. In the mighty name of Jesus. Katika jina kuu la Yesu. For me. Mimi. I am born again. Nimeokoka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is what I told them in Brazil. That the judgment of God is coming against homosexuality in Brazil. And that the Messiah is also coming. That now they have a choice. Either to choose repentance and revival. Or to choose the wrath of God. That when they choose repentance and revival. They will be like Kenya. And they will be headed directly into heaven. But when they choose the wrath. They will be struck down. And they will end up in the lake of fire. That is what I said before I left. And for you Kenya I bless you eternally. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be a man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 